Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the Irish Shorty channel. On this channel I will be talking about football, soccer, mainly about Newcastle, other things in the Premier League and, and football around the world as well, and Ireland, the FAI as well. That's why, you know, got the Irish in the name, you know. You know, it's quite hard supporting both of them, so. You know, but it's a double whammy. And, but anyway, enough waffling, let's just get into the video. Today I'm going to be making the video that everybody and their nan will creating this year, the 2021-22 Premier League predictions. Let's get into it. So in 20th spot in the worst relegation place, I've got Watford. Now I do like Watford, I respect him obviously in big, uh, what's his face, Ben Foster, you know, Cycling GK, great videos and all. Can't wait to see the St. James Park video. But uh, yeah, I have him in 20th, I don't think they have enough squad depth, I think they'll be definitely relying on Schmelisar. And hopefully they don't lose them, but if they do, yeah, they're definitely screwed. And obviously Troy Deeney, but I think he's lost his touch of magic now. If he ever had any, which he definitely did. But yeah, so 20th is Watford. In 19th is the second newly promoted squad in the second relegation spot. And it's Brentford. And Brentford got through through the playoffs, which is always a bit dodge, but you know. Because uh, they didn't quite win the championship, but they got through through the playoffs. So they are well deserved, obviously in the Premier League. I think I literally know, I know Ivan Tony, I know Smallbone, I think that's his name, plays for Ireland as well. And I think that literally they're will be relying on Ivan Tony and that's about it. Um, I think they've gotten a few transfers in so far and you obviously need to if you want to survive. Yeah, but I just don't think they have, they have a good enough squad to stay in the league. In 18th place, you know, this was very hard this year. I think it's going to be very tough here around the relegation and the Champions League spots. I've had to put Brexit FC, you know, Sean Dyche FC. I think this is his sixth or seventh year at Burnley. I think, you know, when I watched them, I remember that 2 1 win Newcastle had against them, where Sam Maximan had an absolute stun of a game. They, they really don't look great. Um, you know, it's obviously. Bregs at football, you know, really just tough in tackling, whatever. But yeah, I think the other teams will have cracked the code by this stage. I think, yeah, Sean Dyke's time is up at Burnley and Burnley's time up at the Premier League. In 17th, this may be a controversial one, but I've gone with Southampton. Now, Southampton, about two, three years ago, people were predicting Europe. I never really saw why. I They have exciting players, obviously. You've got Ward Prowse, you've got, I really like uh, Vestergaard. The defender, I think he's really good, but then it's Ward Prowse, and then it gets like their forwards. Danny Ings wasn't really on the mark next year, that last year. I think it'll be the same again this year, and they will really struggle and be a relegation dogfight. In 16th, I've got Brighton. I think the football hipsters dream, you know, Brighton. Uh, they've lost Ben White, their best centre back. Hopefully, they can keep hold of Basuma, but you know, the football hipsters love Brighton and Graham Potter, so. Who knows, they always manage to just stay up. They're one of those, I think they'll, they'll comfortably stay up. So, you know, I think they'll be sort of wrestling with Southampton in those uh, 17, 16 spots. So yeah, in 16th I've got Brighton. 15th is Crystal Palace. Now I support Newcastle, but Crystal Palace must be depressing. It's just 15th, 14th, 16th, every single year. You know, Zaha, yeah, he's great now, but he doesn't really have as big an output. I think, don't think last year he did too much. Eze is out for a good while anyway. They're hoping to get November, December, but, you know, it's not looking likely. Yeah, there's just not really very many standout names. I think it's going to be definitely, they've got some good signings. I know they signed that left back, I'm pretty sure it was. But Vieira is unproven. He did, he's got done terrible everywhere he's gone. I, think, I don't think he's the greatest appointment, but, you know, yeah, so in uh, 16... Or 15th. I've got. In 14th, I've got definitely controversial. I've got West Ham. I think they were not carried by Jesse Lingard, but definitely Jesse Lingard was their standout name last year. And it's not looking like that they're going to get him back, unfortunately. I think Antonio definitely will do well this year. Soufal, Cresswell, Fabian, Fabianski, all the other names. But yeah, I just think with. Uh, European football, most of these players haven't played it before, and I think it's definitely going to take a toll on their fitness as well. So, yeah, in uh, 14th, you've got West Ham. In 13th, I've got New Boys Norwich. Norwich are pretty exciting. They've lost Buendia this year, but Rashika is looking great. I know I've watched him a few times. He does look 
good, very pacey, cost of a winger. Uh, Cantwell is also pretty good, but Pookie, I'm not sure he's going to be able to cut it. Tim Krull, obviously, you know, former West Ham, still love you, Timmy. Anyway, um, yeah, Max Ahrens is pretty good as well. He's been linked with away. You know, we got, um, what's his name? Can't remember his name, but I know we got one of the left backs from Norwich when they went down. And they still actually kept most of their good players. So, yeah, and 13th, I've got Norwich. I think usually when uh the three promoted teams usually one does well you know last year was leeds but this year i think it will be norwich in 12th i've got wolves you know i don't think last year people can really say that it was a disappointment for wolves you know they've got european football but i don't think that should be the norm with teams you know it's the same with sheffield again with west ham this year it's always going to be a one-off thing it happened with burnley a few years ago as well there's always you some teams just always have that one season that they do really well i think Wolves are a good team, but they're going to get him and his back, and he's been out for nearly a year. So I don't think he's going to go right back into form. I think it's Bruno Lage is the new manager. They've lost Nuno. The whole Portuguese thing has gone for a crumble. Trincao, though, they've gotten on loan. I do like him. So, yeah, Wolves 12th again this year. In 11th, I've Everton. Now, of course, our Lord and Saviour, Rafa Benitez, is at Everton now. Um, he, His football isn't very great for, I don't know, how he really won the Champions League. Obviously, we love him at Newcastle since he won this, the championship. But Steve Bruce has now proved that he got the same amount of points as Rafa Benitez. So, you know, I'm starting to see a bit of a pattern here. You know, maybe Steve Bruce for the Champions League. Who knows? Anyway, but, um, yeah, Everton, they, they, are, they are a good team. I like Everton. You know, hopefully Hamas will get back running again. He had a sloppy second half of the season. You know, Richarlison... Uh, if Charleston looks like he may go to Real Madrid since Ancelotti's gone I think that's the biggest loss you know Ancelotti he was just a great coach although he didn't finish well last year I think he's just great to have around you know a really good manager so yeah in 10th it's going to be definitely controversial but I've got Newcastle you know my team I think the end of last year um, look was incredible you'd swear we were Champions League contenders but um I think we definitely need to sign Joe Willock. Joe Willock is the number one priority. I think they're, they're willing to pay 20 million. Uh, Arsenal won 30 million. I'd say they'll meet in the middle for 25. And maybe throw in Freddie Woodman, I think they were saying as well. Maybe go 22, throw in Freddie Woodman. But um, we're also linked with Axel Twansby, Twanzibi, I think it is, um, from Manchester United. I think that would be good. I think he'd start in the five back, but then in, in the centre backs, we have Lascelles, Sharon, and him, I think. They'd be our best, um, our best defense, our best three centre back combination, and then um, who else were linked with Fogini? I think his name is from Angers in France. I think that would be great. He's very creative, skillful, you know, speedy, a bit like Sam Maxman, but more central and more defensive. So yeah, in tenth, I've got my team Newcastle. In ninth, I've got Aston Villa now. At the time I'm making this video, it does look like Aston Villa are going to lose Jack Grealish. But if they don't, I think they'll finish ninth. But if they do, they could go 12th, 11th, whatever. I don't think they'll stay top half if they lose Grealish. He really just is so important to them. Um, they brought in Buendia. Buendia is really good. Uh, he was really good for Norwich. 40 million, I think, is a bit of a stretch. But, you know, I think Buendia will help maybe keep Grealish at Villa. But, you know people feel about Jack Grealish but yeah Villa are in ninth I don't think they have as great of a first season back as last year but yeah Villa ninth in eighth I've got Leeds like I don't not really many people hate Leeds you know it's great to see them back in the Premier League and run again I think Patrick Bamford will have a good season again um Rafinha is just incredible to watch I love watching Rafinha uh, Jack Harrison Stuart Dallas they're all you know in form doing well uh Meslier as well he's looking really good uh, hopefully he'll get better this year. So yeah, I don't think it's going to be a Europe push, but yeah, they could get into the con is it eight conference league. No, I don't think so. But yeah, uh, Leeds eight. In seventh, I've got Arsenal. Now Arsenal had a shocking season last year under Arteta. I don't really know why he's still there. They're saying, oh, trust in Arteta, but he's always better at Everton than anyone I think when he was playing. And so um, I think definitely having no Champions League football will help them. Uh, I'd say this is going to be Aubameyang's last year if he doesn't hit the mark run again. I know he's injured last year as well. But Lack is going to really have to help them. Healthy Joe Willock can help them as well. Tierney looks like he's going to really break through this year, get a lot of assists. 
and uh, so yeah, Arsenal 7th. Now the top 6 was probably the hardest to predict out of the whole thing. I think this is going to be one of the tightest Europe uh, qualification places in years because the top 4, you know, United, Liverpool, Chelsea and uh, City, they all have really, really good teams now that United have brought in Sancho, Varane. I don't know if they're going to bring in anyone else, but they they look really good. But, you know, Arsenal, sort of, I think, I don't think they'll have a Champions League push, really. I think they'll stay around 6th, 5th, 7th, you know, all season, and then they'll eventually just finish 6th back into Europa League. Again, I think European football will, you know, uh, pull on the fitness and stuff, but, yeah, I've put Leicester 6th. Maybe they can put a run in through the Europa League, but, yeah, I hope they do, obviously, because... This list, I think there could be literally about six or seven points excluding fourth and first this year. I think it's going to be incredibly close. But fourth, I've put Man United. I just think the amount of money they're spending, I think they've spent the most out of the top six in the past few years, even more than City. I think that just because you buy a load of players doesn't mean they're going to gel well. They're going to immediately hit the ground running. And I think that's what Ollie is hoping to do. You know, Varane and Sancho, I've noted that they're going to have good seasons, but I don't think they... It's like City, they, they do invest well. They go out, they don't, won't go and buy a Jaden Sancho or Rafael Varane. They go out and sort of scout these players like Ruben Diaz, Ederson, uh, who else? Cancelo and... Um, what's his name? Uh, I forget who I'm talking about, but... Yeah, they, they, they're not going to sign big household names, but they'll, they'll grow the players into the potential and make them worth in the triple digits of millions so yeah fourth i've got united in third is liverpool now you're probably going to guess the top two now but liverpool i think van dyke and gomez matip they're all back now after nearly a year of being out i think Kanata, i think it's going to be the starting lineup will be van dyke gomez in the center backs and then Kanate maybe uh, rotate Kanate and stuff. I doubt Madoff's going to get much game time this year with Kanate coming in now. Um, but I think this could be Mane and Firmino's last season. I think Salah will retire at Liverpool. I think that's sort of him that now the fans love Salah. Salah loves Liverpool. Liverpool love Salah. Salah loves Liverpool. So I think definitely Salah's going to take them to third place this year. In the second night with Chelsea, it's probably the wild card. he could add but they definitely do need a striker and if they don't get a striker I don't think they could finish seventh but it is looking like they are going to get one so Chelsea in second so by now you've definitely guessed who's first I think there's no doubt most people are going to say except the Arsenal fans uh, Man City are going to win the league it's just I don't think if what's it if um, Kane goes to City I think you can throw away the first the number one spot champions are going to be Man City. They haven't really bought anyone yet, but I don't think they really need to. Their depth is insane. Phil Foden's only growing. Younger players are only growing. Their defence is just 
in saying that Philly Laporte isn't getting any games, Laporte would be probably any other team in the lower half's best player in years. And he's sitting on the bench, you know, Bernardo Silva's not getting games. Um, but I don't like Gabriel Jesus, I really don't. He just seems to be moaning all the time. Um, so they definitely need, I know they've won the league without really an out and out, out and out striker, but I think if you're going to do over a long term period and you want to win the Champions League, you're going to need to go out and buy a striker. So definitely Man City needs to buy a striker. But number one, it's, it has to be Man City. I think this year where the, again like last year, where the um, competition got to come is the relegation spots and the uh, second, third and fourth. So I think they're definitely the places to look out for not really the first place because I think Man City are definitely going to dominate the air this year. So my fellow football fans, that's going to be the end of the video for today. If you did enjoy, make sure to like it. Thanks for watching the first video on the channel. Any support really would help. You know, I'm just getting started, hoping to get a few videos out before the start of the season and during the season as well. But yeah, thanks for watching and that's going to be it for today. Bye.